Smith coming to you from Inside Out Studio. Check one, two, three. Give us a like, say hi, give us a comment as well if you're out there watching along. Let me know if I'm too loud, let me know if I'm too quiet. But thank you for joining us today. I am gonna be pre preparing a lesson for you, a little collage lesson. So I wanna first of all say thank you to Amanda Joy Denowitz, who's been doing the previous two live art minis with us. She is currently on leave due to the coronavirus and to the fact that our studio is shut down. So it is me, and I'm also still here with Kim Neal Davis, marketing and finance manager. So she's up there doing her part, doing some online sales for us and making sure our artist work is getting sold so they can earn a paycheck and an income like always. So I am here live in the studio itself. Uh, you can see some artwork behind me. I just wanna highlight some of the pieces that were left behind in progress that will be continued once we start up again. Off to my left here is a nice underwater scene that was in progress by Brett Garrett. See a nice shark happening in that one. And on the wall in the back is a painting of sunflowers by Cassie Sullivan, who was just featured on our Facebook post earlier today. So hello to all the artists out there and hello to everyone else joining us. I am Stephen Smith from Inside Out. I'm the art education coordinator here. And I am living proof that you can teach an old dog new tricks because we've got some graphics down here, learning this new program and happy to join you on Facebook Live today. So what I wanna do is teach you a little bit about surrealism and collage. So you might know the term surrealism. I'm gonna pull up a famous painting here. This is The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. So he was one of the most famous artists to partake in surrealism, which was an art movement in the 1920s in Europe. So it was consisting of painting and collaging and also writing too. But what makes surrealism a style in itself, to try to you know, paraphrase it, is that there is some fantasy or dreamlike things happening that could never happen in real life, but the artists depict it in a realistic way. So like I said, this is by Salvador Dali. It's called The Persistence of Memory. Some of you might know it as the Melting Clocks painting. Here is another painting done by René Magritte, who is a French painter. And this is kind of the inspiration for our project today. This is called Still Life. And as you can see, this interior room has a lot of crazy things happening. First of all, the wallpaper is painted to look like it's the sky itself. So you're not indoors, but you're outdoors. And then the scale of objects is a little bit off, like the giant comb on the bed there, the giant matchstick and pill and cup. So one thing that we're gonna be playing with today is scale and proportion. So we're gonna make things look like they're the sizes that they are not. And we're gonna be doing that with magazines. So I'm gonna show you the example that I came up with here. So what I did is went through some different magazines, pulled out imagery, anything that really caught my eye or popped out to me, and then placed it into a scene. So you have the, the bowler standing on top of the kitchen counter with the very nervous M&M staring in the middle there. And then we've got a watch, which I used as a clock on the wall in the back. And then playing with the circular themes of the M&M and also the clock there, we went with a, uh, some citrus fruit, found some limes, found some lemons, had them playfully coming up out of the bottom, and then a golf ball for no reason other than it is a circle. So what we asked you to do is gather some materials. And I'm going to pull up a screen real quick here. And then we've got some magazines. We've got a nice variety here. I whipped out a Men's Health from like two years ago, which I probably never looked at in the first place, along with some Martha Stewart's, who has some great photography. So if you can think of any other magazines that might have good images in there, feel free to post those in the comments. And then also, yeah, tell us what you're using at home. A uh, glue stick is preferred, but if you don't have a glue stick, a nice old bottle of Elmer's glue will work and then a trusty pair of scissors as well. Let me fade back to, whoa, here I am. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is just start browsing through some magazines. Like I said, feel free to comment there with what you prefer. Here's the old men's health. Maybe I'll find some exercises to do at home while we're all under quarantine. So first things first, I see a watch. I already used one in the previous collage, so that could be a nice clock. And then when you find something you like, just go ahead and rip the whole page out. I'm gonna set that to the side for later. So the first stage is really just browsing. And then you're looking, oh my gosh, look at that. 
completely inappropriate. So we're just browsing, looking for, the, oh, we have a guest star today. I didn't know it, but Johnny Depp is here. And if you come across any cologne or perfume samples, you have to smell them. Give it a little rub there on the wrist. That might last you a day or two. But you're just looking through for anything that pops out to grab your attention. This hot sauce, I might be able to use that later. And there's something cathartic about just ripping out a page as well. So don't use any magazines that you're currently reading. You might have a spouse or a family member say, hey, I was reading an article on the back of that page. There's some ice cream. Look for that one. So while you're looking for smaller pictures or images that you might want to use in your collage, you're also looking for a background scene. Uh, something that takes up a full page, at least a half page, a larger scene that you can kind of work your images around in. And let me pull this up here. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I did pull out some previous pictures to use as examples. Uh, one of which would be a landscape. So this takes up the majority of the page. So I could add some things at the bottom, add something up in the sky, add something happening in the trees. So there's different depths of field that you could add your images into there. Uh, something I found from Martha Stewart, or if you have any home design magazines, is that you can get an interior scene, just like the example I had. So a nice kitchen, you could have something up on the countertop, on the floor, up in the cabinets as well. Basically it's a canvas that you're going to put your other images onto. And then one last one here, this two, two very serious looking people. I think I'm going to use that for my example. We'll try to brighten their day up a little bit with the collage here. But we're going to go back to looking here. I'm going to flip over to a Martha Stewart. She's got some great pictures in her magazine. I pulled out an old Christmas edition. Who couldn't use a little Christmas right now? A little Christmas spirit with everything that we're going through. So great pictures and Martha Stewart. I know that I've heard that she does hire photographers and designers from RISD, which is the Rhode Island School of Design. And they ha they're one of the most prestigious design schools in the country. That's why everything looks so great. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip through here. There's some little Christmas trees. I might wanna use these later. You could use that in a landscape. Maybe it's the summertime in your landscape and you want to add some snowy trees in there just to throw things off in a subtle way. I did earmark some sections to the back here just to speed up the process for us. Now this is something that you want to take time doing at home. Obviously you're not going to try to get it done in 15-20 minutes like we're doing our video today. But if you're hanging out with your family, it's something to do. You can just have some conversation, hang out, browse through magazines, make your collage at your leisure. Uh, one thing we will ask you to do too is, you know, if you feel like it, here's a picture I put aside, some nice reindeer ornaments I could put into a landscape or to a scene. I was gonna say one thing we would like you to do is after you finish your collage at home, go back into this feed on Facebook. I'm getting stopped. There's a cool cocktails right here. I'm going to pull out for the scene. So go back into this feed on Facebook, and then you can post a picture of what you created because we'd love to see what you're doing at home. It's always nice for food and drink and Martha Stewart. All right, I think I've got quite a few down. And I pulled some aside earlier today as well, just to show you some images that have been cut out. So we've got a nice citrus drink here, nice ice cream cone, a couple dogs there. So what you're seeing is you start to cut out the images from your page, you want to cut as close to the edge as possible, getting rid of any background color, getting any background scenes. That way it kind of seamlessly fits into the picture in a nice funny way. Like I said, these two look very serious. I was gonna say, nom, 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 nom. Maybe they need some ice cream to cheer them up. Do something playful, do something fun. 
So let's cut out some of these images here. Some hot sauce. Spice up our day. So like I said, you just want to take your time, cut slow, go as close to the edge as possible. That way you're getting rid of all this background noise. And you're just going to have the image and the item itself. Uh, one other option, if you, let's say, are going for a more professional route, you want to be more precise, you could use an X-Acto knife. Just make sure you have a mat or pad. That way you're not carving into the surface of a table. And as always, safety first. I'm looking for a nice sharp pair of scissors at home. Always go to my wife's gin studio. Because she has really professional nice scissors. And she'll say, why are you using that for everyday stuff? It's because I know they work really well. All right, I got my hot sauce all cut out here. There we go. Let's see what else should we cut out today. We got some cookies, chocolate chip cookies. Also, I had to show this guy. He just looks like he's loving life right there. He looks more complex to cut out with the arms going round and round, so I'm just not going to worry about him right now. I'll save him for a later collage but I liked his spirit. So we're gonna go ahead and cut out our chocolate chip cookies. And as you're looking for images, cutting them out, there's no limit. If you wanna shoot for four or five images to put into your scene, just to make it unique and different, that's good. If you want 10 or 11, that's cool too. But it's really up to your discretion. I'm going to take a shortcut here. So one thing to do if there's lots of nooks and crannies on the image you're cutting out is you can cut her out roughly around the edges and then go back later. Take your time and be more precise as you're going on the ins and outs of all the different shapes there. So one thing I will say as I'm cutting out these chocolate chip cookies is that I believe Kim has posted our online store address in the comments there. So if you're looking to do any online shopping, if you're looking to support the artists and see what we have on our store, you can click that link and go see what we have to offer. We've also got a nice online Facebook social media schedule going every Monday. We have a Artist of the Week. This week's featured artist was Morgan Gademeyer. So it tells you a little bit about Morgan, and then it shows you some of her amazing artwork that she's created here. Say that's good to go for my chocolate chip cookies. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. Let's see what we can play with here. I definitely want to add this ice cream cone to the scene here to cheer up the day of these two people. Uh, we need some hot sauce. Spice it up over here to the side. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the scene here too so we're getting rid of this background noise and the words underneath the picture. Alright, so then we're going to start gluing some things down. So I'm going to have the hot sauce off to the side here. So it's going to be what we call cropped over the edge. Sometimes you want to make it look like things are going off the edge because it makes the image more dynamic. It makes it more realistic looking. So we're just going to get our handy dandy glue stick. Off to the side here. Gonna go ahead and add our hot sauce. 
So to get kind of art nerdy on you, one reason I chose the hot sauce is because it's a very strong vertical element, which mirrors the vertical nature of the people going right there. One reason I chose the ice cream is because it's mint chocolate chip, and that's my favorite. So I'm going to give her mint chocolate chip right front and center. And this is one element of surrealism because that is a giant mint chocolate chip ice cream cone. Actually, before that dries, I can move it up there. Put it right there on that stool, but no, that's blocking too much of her. So I'm going to move it back down. Witnessing art in the moment, decision making. And then one other technique I can show you is that sometimes you want to integrate your image more into the picture itself so you can cut a slit into the scene where you could sneak another image into it. So you've got this strong edge on the wall up there. I could cut a slit in the opening and then slide a picture through to make it look like it's popping out from above. So you're going to start by just making a little notch in the paper as close to the edge as possible so you can't even see where the opening is. So now you kind of have like a little pocket, a little opening that you could put another image into. That image could be the chocolate chip cookies coming out. A little slide effect going on there. But I also had these dogs. I'm going to throw a couple dogs in here. And just bring it in from the back. And slide it out and boing! You've got a couple dogs popping up from behind. Actually, I'm just going to go with one dog. So it's just kind of hovering above there. Another surrealist aspect is this dog's head looks huge in proportion to the people in the scene. So we're just going to add a little bit of glue stick to the back there, press down, and seal it in place. All right, and we can keep playing with more and more imagery. I've got this guy that was a friend of the bowler from the, the original example going on in there. I could integrate him in the background in some way because he obviously does not fit into the scene. We have a nice big open spot right there where we could add something else as well. But, you know, when you're doing this at home, like I said, take your time, enjoy the company if you have your company, and then come back and post what you did into the comment sections of the feed below. So we are also going to work to get this onto our YouTube channel, so you can go there and we'll put the link out there so you can find it as well. Um, let's see. One thing that we have is that, um, you can, like I said, you can come back later, check out this video, please post please share as well. And then check out the link for our online store. You can see what the artists have for sale. And then that is available for pickup and or delivery if you are local to Hamilton, Ohio and Inside Out Studio. So before we go, if you've been keeping up uh, tabs on Facebook, one thing that you've seen is a lot of people are sharing their senior pictures in support of the class of 2020, which may or may not have their graduation. So I just wanted to whip out this little fun photo for you. There he is. There's class of 1997, Stephen Smith. So with, um, you know, great first guitar. I knew all three chords. That never really turned into much of a career there, but art did work out for me. And I hope art works out for you. Thank you for joining us today for Live Art Mini. Uh, happy collaging and best of luck with your creation. We do want to see it, so come back and post it. And then I will see you live next Wednesday at 1 p.m. So until then, this is Stephen Smith signing off for Inside Out Studio. Thanks and have a great week. Bye-bye.